Hi everybody, this is Mark from Mark's Mandalas, and this tutorial is the Animal Lover Pet Memorial Dot Mandala. And I'm starting off with uh, this little short video before I move into the slideshow portion of the tutorial, as I want to explain uh, the order of your colors and the dot placement that creates the swirl pattern. And you see all the colors that I've decided to use. I'm using six of the seven colors of the rainbow. I'm not using indigo. And the reason for that is it's a 12 dot pattern and I want it to go into it evenly. So I'm only using six of the seven colors. And I put them in order. And if you've watched my other videos, you are aware of me uh, doing the, the first four dots at 12 o'clock, six o'clock, three o'clock, nine o'clock, or north, south, uh, east, west. Um, if you want to use a compass reference, and that is to help keep balance to my to my uh, mandala. And so what I need to figure out are what colors I'm going to use for those first four colors. Now, since it's a 12 dot pattern, there are going to be 12 dots in each circle of dots. I'm using six colors. There's going to be two dots of each color in each circle of dots. And I decided I'm going to start off with purple. And so I know that purple is going to be my 12 o'clock and my 6 o'clock. So I have to figure out my three o'clock and nine o'clock because it's not going to be blue because this is the order I'm going to put the colors in. So if I know this is 12 o'clock and the next color, this is going to be one o'clock using an analog clock face as reference. So 12 o'clock, one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock. So I know that yellow is going to be my three o'clock and nine o'clock uh, dots. So once I have that figured out, I go ahead and use this rock that has the same rainbow swirl that we're going to be doing uh, to give you a visual. So I always try to dot at my 12 o'clock. And so once I do my first dot at 12 o'clock, I'll turn the rock and I'll do 12 o'clock again using this bottom one as my reference. And then I know that I'm going to be doing yellow next at my three o'clock and nine o'clock. So I'm going to turn this, and I know it might be kind of hard to see uh, with all these dots on here, just these two purple dots, but you'll see this in the slideshow portion of the tutorial. And so once I'm using these two purple dots as reference, I'll paint that yellow dot at 12 o'clock, and then I'll rotate this around, and I'll do the other yellow dot at 12 o'clock. Now from here, you can decide which color you want to do next, because you have the foundation. I've decided to do blue as my next color, so I'm going to put purple up here. And this is the tricky part about the 12 dot pattern is you have to eyeball the space in between the purple and the yellow, knowing you have to put two dots in there evenly. It's a practice thing. And the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. And I'm sure some of you are naturals. I sure wasn't. And I still have a, a tough time with it, but it's okay. If you make a mistake, you can just wipe it off and, and try it again. So after I do the purples and the yellow, I decided I do the blue dot, which is at one o'clock. And after I do that one o'clock, I don't come down here to seven o'clock. I rotate this back up again and I do the other one at the top. And this is important for this pattern, I think, to do it this way because of the, um, the way this pattern works. And so once you go around and you do this first circle of dots, you have your foundation. From there, it's all about going to the right or going to the left. And that just will determine the uh, direction of the swirl. I go to the right pretty much all the time. It's just uh, easier to uh, be consistent, less likely to make a mistake. And what I mean by going to the right is once I do my purple, well, I do the, all, the circle of dots, I go back to purple again. I look for the purple in the previous circle of dots and I want to intersect between the purple and the blue, and that's to the right of the, the small purple dot. And you notice here, um, here's a triangle, which I talk about in other visualizations, with the purple going to the right. If you look at the blue, it's going to the right of the blue, and it's also a triangle between these three dots. These are things that will help you keep balance. And you're pretty much just going to keep going around as far as I do the purple on both sides, as far as I'll do this purple, I'll rotate it, I'll do the purple, and then I'll do the blue, rotate it, do the blue, 
and so on around the pattern. And you do that all the way out. And for me, it takes three or four circles of dots before I really start seeing that swirl effect. And I think it takes about that many at least uh, to be able to, uh, to show that effect. And I hope that this video portion of the tutorial has helped out. And I'm going to go ahead and move forward with the slideshow so that you can see the step-by-step -step on each dot that I place in the pattern, as well as the paw print border on the, on the outside. Hi everybody, this is Mark from Mark's Mandalas, and I'd like to welcome you to the Animal Lover, also known as the Pet Memorial Dot Mandala Tutorial. And as you can see, we're starting right off with the 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 9 o'clock approach that I start every 8, 12, and 16 dot pattern with. And I do this to help keep balance, and this is going to be a 12 dot pattern. Uh, I find that the 8 and 16 dot patterns are easier to keep balance because once you get the first four dots down you're just intersecting them or dividing those in half for the next dots. The 12 o'clock pattern is a little bit more challenging and uh, it does take practice to get more comfortable with it and what I do is I try to visualize an analog clock face. So after I get the first four dots down I try to envision the one o'clock and two o'clock and the different numbers on the traditional clock face and that helps me get balanced that first circle of dots. Uh, once that first circle of dots is laid down it's going to get easier as you don't need to um, worry about not having some sort of a guide to help you with the rest of the pattern. And as you can see the color choices and tool sizes are popping up pretty regularly. Uh, this rainbow swirl is a 12 dot pattern with six different colors so each circle of dots only has two dots of each color and it's more labor intensive you're switching out your paint a lot more often but I think it's worth it for the effect and I don't think I even mentioned that uh, whenever I put up um, a picture of a tool or bottle of paint it uh, is letting you know that I'm changing and using both of the items that are being shown there and please uh, remember that you can pause this at any time to get a better look at what step I'm on. And I didn't go into detail about how I found the center on this tile to start this mandala. Um, I'm going to attach a link to one of my other videos that shows you how to easily find center on just about any item by using my lesson six. Um, you can download and print that lesson sheet for free um, from my website marksmandalas.com um, as well as my other lesson sheets. And the lesson six has just a, a small white dot in the middle that you can punch out and lay it over in this situation over a tile that's about the same size. So um, you just lay it over the tile and take a, the number one tool and poke it through that, that uh, hole with a little bit of paint on it and that will mark the center so you can place your center dot. At the end of this tutorial, I have uh, a picture that shows eight different variations of this pattern and they're all on tiles. A couple of them are white and um, there's different combinations as far as there are some single color where I only use one color paint for the whole pattern and other ones will use accent dots in between as well as some top dots and one of them has uh, the paw print border that I use on this one and I use it on each circle of dots. So there are some other variations you can do. This tutorial here, I'm not doing any accent dots or top dots on it. I'm just giving you the base pattern. And if you would like to add embellishments, you're more than welcome to. And if not, I think it looks great just the way it is. And if you would like to use different colors, by all means, or even the single color ones, there are some examples that you're going to see. And if you take a look at the center, on that photo at the very end of this tutorial. It is of the rock that I used as a demonstration in the video portion at the beginning of this of this tutorial and that rock is part of the inspiration for this whole pattern. I had uh, been painting dot mandalas for just a couple of months and a woman reached out to me whose friend who had, uh, had lost her dog 
and this woman wanted to get her friend something uh, very personal and wanted to see if I could create something that would be appropriate. And I showed her a picture of that rock just to get an idea for the size. And she saw a paw print on that border. And that is what, what spawned this whole thing. That rock actually was used for one of my first uh, photo demonstrations on my Facebook page that show uh, the difference on one side, it's very rough and the dots don't look very good. And then on the other side, I spackled it and wanted to show the difference between spackled and non-spackled on a rough rock. And uh, I'm about halfway through the border now as far as the paw print border, which consists of four dots around each outer dot. And I just try to split the middle each of the outer dots with my eyes and place the first dot just a little bit to the left of center and the other dot a little bit to the right of it and then I do dots on both sides of that and it doesn't have to be perfect and uh, because paw prints they're they're all unique so there's not a, a problem if they're off center a little bit or the spacing is a little bit a little bit off and uh, we're actually getting pretty close to the end of the the slideshow portion of this and we are coming up on that photo of the different examples of what you can do with this pattern. You can also do this pattern on a number of different items such as coffee mugs, pendants, canvas, rocks, um, or anything else that you can think of to paint on. And uh, there's the photo that I was talking about. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and I look forward to the next one. This is Mark from Marksman Dollas. Until next time, Rock on.